So in this video, I'm going to talk about logical agents. Okay, so the basic actions of a logical agent uh, are tell and ask. A, a logical agent is a is an agent that trusts a knowledge base to keep track of things. Okay, and you can tell facts or ask for other inference, right? So, for example, you can tell the agent that father, the father of John is Bob, you can tell the agent that Jane is John's sister, and you can tell the agent that John's father is the same as John's sister's father. So then you can ask, who is Jane's father? And the idea is that this logical agent will infer, based on these facts that it has been told, it will infer who is Jane's father. It knows the relation, knows the father of John is Bob, and knows that Jane is John's sister, so so far it seems like the father of Jane might be Bob. It also knows that John's father is the same as John's sister's father, right? So we ask who's John's sisters, John's sister, um, and that is Jane. So then the father of John is the same as John's sister's father. So you ask, and that is Bob, and that is an inference. What I just did here is an inference. So the idea of intelligent agent again is an agent where you can tell a lot of facts and via logic you can ask for a question and via inference it can provide the answer to that question. Now the main components of a knowledge-based agent uh, are a knowledge-based, a knowledge-based, so all these facts, a knowledge representation language. We might not be able to uh, to tell naturally, hey Jane is John's sister or is the same as John's sister's father. We need some kind of language that abstracts those concepts. We need an engine that performs inference of some of some sort. Um, and we have to have a background knowledge about the world that we put in the knowledge base. At every step, the idea is that our intelligent agent will construct a sentence uh, or, or one of these facts with assertions about the the percepts, right? So it senses something and it will tell a fact to uh, its knowledge base. Then it'll construct a sentence asking what action is next. It will basically, uh, it will tell the new perception and it will ask, what do I do next? Given these facts, what do I do next? And then uh, say, the, uh, and say the response, the response will be an assertion, something that it inferred. Okay, when we talk about constructing a sentence, is that we construct a sentence in the language of our abstraction for the knowledge base. We're going to look at an example of this with the uh, Wumpus world. The Wumpus world is a it was a, an old, uh, almost text-based game, uh, and it'll so, and it'll serve to illustrate uh, this logic, although it's far. Uh, more simple than many of the games, uh, many of today's games, it's a good example. So the Wumpus world is first a grid. Okay, it's a grid. All the adjacent rooms are connected horizontally or vertically. Now, in the cave, there is a Wumpus, this monster. And the players can smell the Wumpus uh, because it emits a stench. The players feel a breeze if a pit is nearby. Oh, what do pits have to do with this? Well, some, room contain, uh, some rooms contain pits that will trap a player, so it's good that you feel a breeze before it, because everything is dark. Then a player can shoot one arrow and kill the Wumpus, or he can shoot it and not kill the Wumpus, but that's the only arrow you have. And one of the rooms contains a pot of gold, which is the prize. Otherwise, you're just off for a very uh, gloomy game with no winning at all. So the grid might look like this. You might have, for example, randomly put pits and the gold here, and then the Wumpus is lurking over here, so then these adjacent squares feel a stench. If there's a pit here, the adjacent squares feel a breeze and a breeze, right? If there's a pit here, adjacent breeze and breeze, and so on and so forth. And you start at square 1-1, one, one, the player. Now, let's look at the formulation of performance, environment, actuators, and sensors. The performance measure. Let's say that we're going to give them 1,000 points for walking out with the gold. So if you get the gold and walk out, that's good. Uh, negative 1,000 if you die. That's basically you lose everything. Negative 1 for each action and negative 10 for an arrow thrown. 
because if you throw the arrow and you kill the Wumpas, you have a higher chance of getting the gold, but if you throw the arrow and do not kill the Wumpas, there's a significant penalty. Now there's negative one for each action. Basically what this says is that every time we move, there's a little penalty. So we want to find the gold as quickly as possible, right? In the least amount of moves. The environment is going to be a four by four grid. We'll start at one, one, and the golden pit uh, will be randomly distributed. And the actuators, as basically the edge can move forward, left or right, or backwards. And the sensors, the, the agent can sense smell, breeze, glitter, uh, um, a bump or a screen. If the if if the player screams, then you know it it was killed, right? And if it bumps, then it hits a wall. All right, let's look at what the player will be feeling at each step here. The player starts at one one. A is the agent or the player. In this case, he starts at one one. Doesn't feel anything. The sensors are none. None, none for, for smell, none for uh, breeze, none for, um, sorry, glitter, bump, gold. Okay. So, and then we have a little notation here. So we know that these squares are okay because there's no adjacent anything and we're fine. Next time we move to 2 1. The agent moves to 2 1 over here. So it went from here to here. This we mark OK. This we mark with a V for visited. And then we go here, and it's OK, but there's a breeze. And our sensors are none, breeze, none, none, none. So the question is, is there a pit here? Or a pit can be here or here, right? Those are dangerous places. So then we start marking this, and maybe we go up and then back to 1, 2. And we might end up in a, in a board like this. We went up. And then back here, for example, we found that this was OK. Because this was OK and there was no breeze, we know the pit was here, right? This is how we're inferring the next, the next move, OK, or the next, the next assertion. So as we move here, there's no breeze. Then we tell the knowledge base there is no pit here. As we move here, we, we, uh, we have a stench, right? We feel a stench. Here's the sensor stench is turned on. We have a stench, right? So we know, and then, and then we hear a stench. So we know that there's a stench in the square. Now the question is what to do next, right? We know, we tell the knowledge base that the Wumpus is here because there's no other place where it can be, OK? And that's how we tell our knowledge base and ask for the next action at each step. Right, so then the agent comes back here and then back here, and th it happens to have the gold there. There's a breeze, so it doesn't know whether there's a pit here or a pit here, right, to get out. And there's a stench, so the sensors are stench, breeze, glitter, none, none. Right, I haven't fallen, I haven't, um, I haven't uh, been caught by the wumpus. So this is how my knowledge base now is this grid. It's forming as I tell it facts about my world as I explore it. So that is the concept of a logical game and knowledge base agent. Another uh, two more slight uh, important, I mean, two more things that I think are important are the following. First, a logic has a syntax. For example, uh, x plus 4 equals 6. This is, this is good math syntax, right? Now, if I do 4x equals 6 plus, this is not a valid math syntax. In the same way, the logic of our knowledge base will have a syntax. We'll talk about that in a different video. The semantics of my logic will define the truth of a sentence, of an assertion. Okay, The way the semantics are the meaning, whether the, the assertion is true or not. And here's what I want to talk about last. The models describe possible worlds. So for example, I have a model here. Here's a model of what I think the grid looks like. Right? So the model describes possible worlds. This is this is one model, right? Another model probably has doesn't have a pit here, doesn't have a breeze here, who knows, right? Or another model might have a pit here, which is irrelevant to my game, but it might be another model. So model describes possible worlds. Uh, model of alpha is the set of all models of alpha. Okay, alpha being um, a sentence. For example, exp um, uh, 
say say my model my model is uh, um, uh, four x equals uh, eight, for example. That's a model. Well, alpha can be just the number two here. Now, if I have another model, for example, x y equals zero. Okay. Now, m of alpha is the set of all the models of alpha, right? So x can be one, y can be three. This model doesn't not true, right? But other things can be x is zero, y is seven, x is zero, y is y is one thousand three hundred twenty-five. Whatever models, right? Uh, whatever models I put here are alpha. Okay. Each model is alpha, and m of alpha is the set of all models, okay, that for this for this sentence, for example, right? m of alpha is the set for all models of this sentence. Some will be true, some will be false. Now, if a sentence in alpha is true for model m, alpha satisfies m. For example, let's look at this model, okay? If a sentence is true for this, a sentence will be, say, for example, x equals 0 and y equals 12. I just came up with those numbers, right? But this model satisfy is true. This this model alpha is true. I'm sorry, this uh, this sentence is true for this model. Okay? Then we can say that alpha satisfies this model. Okay? I can make it more logically dependent. I can say x equals 0 and y equals 12 satisfies this model okay x equals 1 and y equals 12 does not satisfy the model <clears throat> now we're going to talk a little bit about entailment this is the last concept we'll cover in this video entailment is when a sentence follows from another we say alpha entails beta alpha entails beta if in every model where alpha is true beta is also true this is the most important thing so we know that basically the model, the, all the models of alpha are more specific than the models of beta, are beta than some more specific circumstance, right? So, for example, x equals zero entails x y equals zero because in everywhere, everywhere where x is true, in this case zero, this model beta is also true. Basically, x equals zero is a special situation of beta, right? Of the models of beta. Therefore, it entails it. Uh, if I say p equals true, and then there's another model sub beta for p or q, well, wherever alpha is true, beta will also be true, right? So if p is true, beta will also be true if p is true, right? So every model where alpha is true, beta will also be true. Beta contains more things, it's more general, right? But alpha is more specific. And wherever alpha is true, beta is also true. Now here's a trickier one that I'm going to attempt to explain, but you can you can uh, continue um, trying to understand. This is one of the tricky situations where false entail entails true. Imagine beta is true always, 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 always. Now imagine alpha is false sometimes, but true sometimes. If alpha is false sometimes, but true sometimes, those instances in which it is true, well, beta will also be true, because beta is true for everything. Now, let's say alpha is false. That means that there is no way in which alpha is true. But beta will always be true, right? So if you ever were to find any true circumstance here, alpha will always be true. Alpha, is, I mean, beta will always be true. Beta is everything. And alpha is nothing. Nothing actually entails everything. That's what we're trying to say. Now, P and Q entails P or Q. What this is saying is that P and Q is more specific than P or Q, but, P or, but the case in which this is true, this will also be true. So the case in which alpha is true, which is P true and Q true, well, beta is also true. If you put true here, true here, right? this will be true. So they don't produce the same output, but where this is true, this guy here will also always be true. 
um, if I say uh, P if and if if and only if Q or R, that entails Q implies P. Okay, you can use logic tables to find that out. In the same way, you can you can say uh, Q implies P entails. Uh, in, in the same way, I want you to find out actually if Q implies P entails P if and, o, if and only if Q or R. Okay, that's something for you to prove. You can use truth tables for this. Okay, another one, for example, if X, we have XY such that X and Y are part of the Brady Bunch, a TV series, an American TV series with six uh, siblings. Okay, if X and Y are part of the Brady Bunch and they're not the same person, okay? That entails X and Y such that X is a relative of Y, okay? X and Y, this is such that X is a relative of Y. So the people in the Brady Bunch are a subset of all people that are relatives among themselves. That's what this is saying and this entails uh, the other. Now let's look at the Wumpus world that we had uh, earlier. Right? So this Wumpus world here, actually in particular this situation. Let's look at this situation in the Wumpus world. I'm here and I want to know where's the pit. So I'm going to try and model all possible pits in here. Right. So my, my model will contain things like there's a pit here and a pit here. There's a pit here and not here, but yes here. All, all possible combinations of pits here. We're going to try and find where are the pits using this technique. So I'm going to try and draw all the places where two pits can be, uh, where, where there can be pits in uh, these, all combinations of pits in this uh, area. So here they are, right? I have one pit here, another one has a pit over here, another one has pits in the corners, another one has all three with pits, another one has all three without pits, and so on and so forth. These are all possible combinations. Okay. Now what I want to answer is, is it true that there are no pits in one, two? One two is this, this space over here. Okay, is it true? So I, I'm going to take all the models that do not have a pit in one two. Basically, this model, right? This model, this model, this model, and those are going to be in my knowledge base, right? But this model also doesn't have any pits in one two, right? But it's not part of my knowledge base because I feel a breeze and I know the rules of the game. Therefore, I know that there there are going to be you know there's going to be a pit somewhere, right? or at least at least one pit somewhere. So what we can say is, is if alpha 1 alpha 1 are uh, are all the models that do not have a pit in 1 2. I know that my knowledge base entails alpha 1. My knowledge base is a specific case of alpha 1. Okay? So we're good. We're we're good to go. Okay? So I can say, yeah, you know, if there are no pits in in there are no pits in 1, 2. This seems to be true because what I know about the world, what I've told with facts in my knowledge base, co uh, uh, complies with it, entails alpha 1. Now, on the other hand, if you were to say, well, is there, are there no pits in 2, 2? So I'm going to explore 2, 2, right? So these are all the models with pits in the area that I'm exploring. Now, no pits in 2, 2 have these. This does not have pits in 2, 2, this one, and this one, right? But my knowledge base, because of the rules of the game, I know that the pit is here or here, right? So my knowledge base also includes this case, right? That I know that this might be a, a fact. I know that this other one might also happen, right? So my knowledge base in this case does not entail alpha 2, which is basically no pits in 2, 2. Right? So now my knowledge base does not entail alpha 2. My knowledge base is not a specific case of alpha 2. So if I ask my knowledge base, are there no pits in 2, 2, it will create all the models, it will look at what it knows, and it will, and it will say that, you know what, what I know does not entail what you're asking. So therefore, no, it's false. Okay? It is false that there are no pits in 2, 2. On the other case, the question was, are there no pits in 1, 2? Well, I model all the cases in which there are no pits in 1, 2. I look at my, the cases in my knowledge base, and they entail the no pits in 1, 2. Therefore, I can say true. Okay? And that is uh, 
entailment and logical agents.